Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Karen Lavender Clothesline and today I have a huge haul from items that I picked up at different thrift stores this week. So I do have so many items. I think I might make this video actually two videos. We'll do a part one and a part two. I will share with you what I picked up, why I picked it up as usual. And if you want to see what my store is selling, you can always go into my eBay store, Lavender Clothesline line. Now, sales this fourth quarter have been like a roller coaster. One day I sold like, I don't know, $1,200 worth. And I think it was the next day or two days later, I sold like $59. So this quarter is really turning out to be like the rest of 2020, all craziness. But overall, my sales are good. I'm really happy with where I'm at and still loving thrifting and looking for treasure. You know, that to me is the best part of this job is getting out there and seeing different things that I know nothing about and then bringing them home and having my hunch be correct that they were worth picking up. Now a lot of times the items that I pick up are, I'm going to call them bread and butter, somewhere between $25 and $40. That's what I consider bread and butter. Sometimes the amount is under that and sometimes I get surprised and find items worth hundreds of dollars. Always love those finds. But today we're going to do hard goods. I do have also two racks of clothing. That's going to have to be a third video. Did find some really good clothing, including this cashmere sweater, which I have absconded and I'm probably going to keep it for myself because um, it's nice and toasty warm. And it is the season here in Pennsylvania. We had great weather and then all of a sudden it was like, I don't know, under 30 degrees at night. So on went the flannel sheets and the duvet cover and out comes the cashmere to keep me warm. Now, now, cashmere, as you know, has a lot of different qualities, and I do look for cashmere sweaters by name. So I look for like L.L. Bean, which I think that's what this one is. I look for Lord & Taylor. Who else? Who else? Uh, Ralph Lauren puts out a good cashmere. But okay, today we're not talking about clothing. Boy, I go down a rabbit hole quick. So I'm going to jump right in, and I'm going to try to make part one and part two. So you'll probably see me wear the same clothing in part two. Just know I filmed one after the other. I'm sure you guys don't even care. And where am I off to today? I have a delivery to make for an eBay local pickup of a mirror I sold. It was a restoration hardware mirror that took quite a while to sell, but I kind of held on to my price and accepted a $200 offer. So I'm going to get that into the car and deliver that. I do meetups in a local parking lot. And yeah, the day just goes on from there. But today we're going to do hard goods part one. So grab yourself a cup of tea and let's get started. Okay, so when I was in the store, I did pick up a piece and put it in my cart and I said to you guys leave a comment down below whether you think I will pick up this piece or not. Now I was kind of on the fence about it because it wasn't really attractive to me anyway. Maybe other people would like it and the bottom was marked made in Italy. So I asked you guys to guess whether I would pick it up to see if you're catching on to what I buy or not and the answer is where is it? I did buy it. So this is the piece we're talking about. Looks like this twisted handle, really pretty teal uh, glaze painting. And the bottom says, made in Italy, L-E-C-R-O, Le Creux, 302. So that is what the bottom looks like. Now, I did go back and forth in my mind, and the reason I took this was a couple of reasons. Number one, the piece is, well right now it's dirty, but it's glazed inside. When I see that the maker of a piece has glazed it inside, not always, but to me that's a little bit higher quality than if it's not finished inside. Also, I really liked the twisted handle. I think out of everything, that's what I liked best about this piece. I did like the shape of it. And because it was marked, that was a reason to push me over the edge into buying it. So that is the answer to that question. Yes, I bought it, $1.99. Now, I don't imagine this is going to bring a lot. I'm going to guess around the $25 mark. 
Okay, next up, we're just going to go through a few pieces that are just normal pieces, and I picked them up because I thought they were good enough to pick up, and we're going to talk about a few of those before I get to the real good stuff. So next up is, it's two parts. We all know these. This is a fairy light. And this is called Stars and Bars or Bars and Stars, something very similar to that name. You can see that it, it's pressed glass. It has a star pattern and then like a striping. Right now this is dirty. Just know that the items I'm showing you today I did not clean yet. Some of it is de-stickered. But this week I went out shopping quite a bit. I am going to stockpile to have things on hand. Learned my lesson from the first shutdown that I didn't have quite enough items to what I wanted to put in my eBay store, if that makes sense. But getting back to this, I did like the color of this. Now I have been passing these by if they're the amber color. Uh, I think pretty much just the amber color I'm passing by. But I thought this one was pretty. $3.99 I paid for this one and I imagine it's going to bring maybe $20, $22, something like that. Okay, next up is just a student piece of pottery and I saw this sitting on the shelf. Now again, this won't bring high money, but I thought this was really well done. I do think it is a student piece and it's signed Garnet, G-A-R-N-E-T-T -T 2000 on the bottom. Hope the sunshine is okay for you guys today. And yeah, so I really don't have a reason for picking this up other than it's a student piece. I think the student did a good job. 2000, so it's not quite true vintage. True vintage is 30 years, but Etsy and a few of the platforms are counting vintage as uh, 20 years. So if we go by that criteria, it's 20 years vintage. But I thought this was really nice. Two-tone glazing. And I really like the shape of this. It has a real jar shape. So really nice. And, um, and that's why I picked it up. What will I get for this? I paid $1.99 for this one. And I'm guessing about $20 to $22 again. Okay, the next one is kind of a crazy find, even for me. I found this picture sitting on the shelf. Now the reason I loved this was that it's put out by Armstrong. I'm thinking it was a giveaway if you bought their, I don't know, insulation or their particle board. They sold many building products. I think they're still in business. I could be wrong about that. And it is a tough guy smoking a cigarette. So I thought that was crazy. But the thing I really liked about it is when you open it up, here are the tumblers inside. So I thought these were good. Unfortunately, they don't have the little tough guy on them, but it does have four tumblers and I paid $1.99. Now, is the average person going to want an Armstrong branded promotional picture? Probably not. But I think because Armstrong is such a large company, you know what I'm noticing? Noticing that the top is cracked. I did not notice that. So that's going to detract from the price greatly, seeing if the pieces are inside. Um, so with having said that, I will still list it. And Armstrong employed or employs so many people, I think they're still in business, that I think somebody may want this. So without the damage, I'm thinking I would have put it on for probably about $25. With the damage under $20, i am going to say about $18, and we'll see how it does. Now you can't see the damage when the lid is closed, so that helps. When somebody wants a collectible and they're rare, and I think these are rare. I did comp it and didn't see one, could have missed it. But when the damage is on the inside of something, it helps a little bit rather than, you know, something having a big crack or whatever on the outside. It also does have a few marks on it. But again, I think somebody's going to want this. $1.99, figure about $15 to $18. All right, next item up is this handmade dry gourd birdhouse and I think this is called a gooseneck or a bottleneck. I'm gonna guess a gooseneck. <laughs> I could be totally making that up but I thought this was really good. As you can see it is decorated with a full acorn design and I'm thinking they did that either with pen I don't know how they did that, guys. This might have been done with a, a burning tool, with a, what is that called? 
burning tool. There's another name to that. I'll think of it. And it could have been burned in. But they did a really great job, and I think this is really beautiful. Now, what did I pay for this? Again, I think this was $1.99, and they did put a leather strap so that it hangs. Really nicely done. So that's why I picked it up. Did I say a price? I'm thinking about the $30 mark for this because people that like these have a tendency to collect them and hang them in a big tree. So I thought this was really good, nice and clean, and very well done. All right, the next item, if I can pick it up without making everything fall on the floor, is this metal bicycle. How good is this? Do we love this? I love this. So I'm not sure who put this out. There's no marking on it that I can see. This is really well done though. Up, oh, it does say something. Let's get the, tr the trusty magnifying glass. What does that say? Hmm. P-A-Y-A-L. Pale? I don't even know. That pale could be, I'm probably saying that wrong, could be the maker of the bolt because that's where the name is. I don't think that's the maker of this bicycle, but I thought this was really good. Now, maybe this is put out by like Ikea or um, I'm not even sure who would put this out. It could be that it's a big brand, a big store, like a restoration hardware, but I would think that they would have their name on it. And I don't see a name on this. It has a metal chain, rubber wheels, kickstand, pedals. The disappointing part to me is that if you're gonna put a chain on, this should all go around and it doesn't. I wanted this to pedal so bad. I was like, come on, this has got to pedal. But it's like locked in place. Unless there is a lock on it, I'm not seeing, but I don't think so. And I don't know, I could see a Barbie sitting on this or a doll of that size. What is a Barbie? I think a Barbie is 11 inches. So a doll of that size sitting on it, really sweet, or just something sitting on the shelf. So I said yes to this. I believe I paid $3 for it. And I don't know, I haven't comped this yet at all. These could be very prolific. They could be really saturated. But I don't know, I don't imagine it is, which means nothing. <laughs> because sometimes in my imagination, I'm guessing something totally different than reality. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, so I said yes to a blue bicycle. I'm gonna guess somewhere, if they're not saturated, somewhere about the $30 mark. So yes to blue bicycles with little sweet baskets. Okay, so in the past, I have done really well with greeting cards. The type of greeting cards that I buy are either vintage, I prefer when they're not marked, unless they have really sweet sentiments on them, like Valentine's Day, or one time in the bins, I picked up a Christmas card collection from the 1940s. I kept the collection together, and that did really well. And they were Christmas cards that a family had received from all over the United States from their family members. They must have had some big family. And those cards did very well. I'm gonna guess it was over a pound in cards, probably one to two pounds. And what did they sell for? I think they sold for almost $100. So I do keep my eyes open for different types of stationery. So with that, I found this set of Christmas cards. Now this is Joy, who is this? Joy somebody, I know this, Joy Campbell. And Joy Campbell does a lot of nature scenes. This one is Animals for Christmas, so I'm going to show you a few of the cards. Now the set is complete, although I should say the cards are complete. I have not counted envelopes yet. It's a pack of 20. And I believe there are five designs and you get four of each. So the first one is a snowman with a little squirrel on his hat and some birds using his hat as a bird feeder. How cute is that? I wouldn't mind doing that in my yard. Although these days I really don't have time to be building snowmen. Um, this is one of my favorite squirrels. Look at the sun killing this shot. Squirrels looking in a window because somebody is serving nuts for Christmas. Um, what else? Red fox at a bird feeder. Hold it up here so you guys can see it. And what else? Oh, this is a favorite. Look at this. A pink pig resting his head on maybe a basset hound. Not quite sure what kind of dog that is. Really sweet. So you get the idea. A cow 
with birds resting on his on his uh, reindeer antler. So I paid $1.99 for this set, and I think I'm keeping this one. I know, shocker, right? But these are so fun and so sweet that I really like these. And one of the best things about this is there's no glitter. I am so over glitter on wrapping paper and greeting cards. Now, while it looks really pretty under the tree, you find glitter till Easter if you do a glitter thing. So I always look for Christmas cards without glitter and um, $1.99. Now, if I was to sell these, I'm thinking probably about the $25 mark for the pack. They originally sold for $16, but people look for Joy Campbell's images. All right, that is the first part of this video. Now we're gonna talk about the serious stuff I picked up. Those were the fun things I throw in my cart. I don't really expect those to bring huge money, but now we're gonna talk about a few pieces that other people were passing by, I don't know why, and I picked up. The first one is not a super high dollar amount, but these are sea grass small lampshades. These go on one of the chandeliers that have different arms and you can, a lot of times you can leave it without a shade or you can clip one of these on. So I'm going to take one so we can talk about it. They are shedding just a little bit. Seagrass does shed, um, but they are in great shape. I would say almost excellent. This seagrass lampshade, I kind of recognized as Ballard Designs. Ballard... <laughs> I've got seagrass flying, I think. Ballard Designs is a beautiful company. The items they put out, in my opinion, really pretty. And Ballard Designs, it can be a little bit pricey. So when I saw five of these sitting on the shelf for $1.99, absolutely yes. Now this is a type thing that you would have to know about to purchase sort of like, like you wouldn't really see it. You'd be like, oh, wicker lampshades, who wants those? And that's what a lot of the shoppers were doing because the store was super crowded. The minute I saw them, they went in my cart and this is what they look like inside. They have the clip-on uh, style and the metal is kind of like a top color, I'm gonna call it. So I'm pretty sure, I'm almost positive this is Ballard Designs. Like I said, I paid $1.99 for them. They were in a bag and I'm expecting somewhere between $35 and $50 for these. Very popular. People love these. They mix into a lot of decor styles. Good for beach houses. You know, anything like that. So first good find. Okay, let's get serious. Are you ready for this find? I couldn't put this in my cart quick enough. I could tell just by looking at it, it was a good one. I'm going to pick it up. It's quite heavy. I'm going to move some things out of the way so I don't break any of my ceramics. Let's see if I can lift this long enough. Next up was a Seth Thomas Helmsman barometer clock. This thing is very heavy, high quality, gorgeous. Now let me just say right off the bat, they are ship's wheels and one of the little spindles, I'll call it, is missing from it but they screw off and on so easily. I don't think that's gonna be a huge problem for whoever buys this to find one of those to put on. I could be wrong about that, but usually when there are high quality collectible pieces, people that find them when they're not in great shape will take them apart, just like I do with chandeliers, and sell the parts separately. So I would imagine that these are common enough that you should be able to get one of these ship's wheel turny things, spindles, but I could be wrong about that. Other than that, this thing is gorgeous. I'm gonna put it down, it's so heavy. Seth Thomas is, in my knowledge, a very good brand, beautiful. I think the piece I have, which is called the Helmsman, is antique. I'm not entirely sure because I haven't done the research yet, but I don't need to do research to know that once I test this and see that it's in good working condition, I'm guessing between $350 and $500. Now another item that is missing from it is the key. I think a key can be picked up for about eight to $10 
and I might go ahead and do that because the eight to ten dollar investment for the key is worth you know me putting out the money. I paid six ninety nine for this barometer clock, and worst case scenario on the worst day over two hundred. So thrilled with this find. If you don't know Seth Thomas, you want to run a comp on on the clocks and different things that that company put out. Okay, switching gears. Harley Davidson Chopper model. I think this was a model. I think somebody built this. <laughs> I could be wrong about that. It does seem like a model kit that you would buy and you would do the you would do the building. You would do the project. The wheels do turn on it. The forked um, handlebars turn. What else turns? The back wheel spins. It has it all. It's got the rubber chain type of thing. Very cool. I would imagine this is highly collectible. I have not comped it and I paid $3 for it. So yes to Harley Davidson, I think model kits that are finished projects. All right, we're gonna do a few more pieces and then I'm gonna do a part two so this video doesn't become two hours long. And um, yeah, we'll see what else I found. So yesterday, I think it was yesterday, was what was yesterday? Thursday. I did shopping in the Big Goodwill and I did go next door to the bins. Was that yesterday? I think that was yesterday. It might have been the day before. I've been out a lot. So even more than usual, I've been hitting all the thrift stores. I found this beautiful bird planter. I was shocked that this was not broken because the bins, everybody digs so heartily, we'll call it, that a lot of the breakable pieces get broken. And from what I can tell, I do not see that he is broken. Usually I'll feel his tail, his beak, because you can miss when they're broken really easily, at least I can. So I said yes to this sweet little planter. How good is this? Not marked. I would imagine this is like hull pottery. I don't think it's McCoy. I don't know my vintage potteries as well as I should, but either way, super sweet. Okay, so in the bins, hard goods are $1.64 a pound. I mentioned this is a little bit over a pound or right around there. So figure under $2 for a vintage, really sweet bird planter. Okay, and you know me, I always throw a pair of shoes into hard goods hauls, so today is no different. We're going to end with a pair of boots that I fell in love with. I think every guy should wear boots like this, just saying, and I'm going to get them. All right, so this is what, let me put this one down so we can really see. These are what these boots look like. They are a leather boot, they're a man's boot. They are put out by Justin. Let's see if I can show you the tongue of the boot. And the top has the fringed tongue, which I think is called a Kelty. Kelty, Kelty, Kelty. K-I-L-T-I-E, mm, yeah, Kelty, I'm gonna say. So they are a beautiful leather. And the one thing that I'm very surprised about these boots is that they don't bring more money. Now for this pair of boots, I can expect to get maybe $40, maybe 50 on a really good day. But to me, a pair of boots like this, the quality of the leather, the style, the condition, to me, in my mind, this should bring over $100. I'm not quite sure why they don't. The only thing I can think of is that maybe there are a lot of them that they're saturated. I haven't checked that, but that's what my brain would tell me, that the more a company makes something, no matter how high quality they are, the more you cheapen your own brand. If you think about rare jewels and rare things, I mean, it's the quality and what it is that makes it expensive. But if you start, well, maybe jewels was a bad example because that's found in nature. But if you start producing something to overabundance, it definitely lowers the price of each item. But nonetheless, these are great. I did pay $7.47 and I'm thinking anywhere from $35 to $50, but gorgeous. I will always pick these up because not only am I about the money, but <laughs> that sounds really bad, oh, about the money. Um, but I'm about like buying good quality items because I want my buyer to 
to have the item and appreciate the quality. So yes to Justin Boots, kilty, kilty tongue, really nice, every man should own a pair. All right, so that is part one of the video. Thank you for watching. If you wanna see the rest of this haul, you can go over and watch part two on Wednesday. This will be Sunday's haul. And as always, go out and get what's yours. Mm -hmm.